Hi, this is O'Connor for Supply Chain Essentials. I'm going to go through many, many examples of how Apple specifically manages its supply chain, especially in this area of the world. Okay, we know that Apple has suppliers all around the world, but predominantly in this region and expanding in India, Vietnam, of course, China, we know that. I'm going to give you lots of instances of examples I know of how Apple is managing their suppliers in China. Now, on the selection of suppliers, the first idea I want to give you is to get you to think about why suppliers will want to work with Apple because invariably they're not going to make money initially in becoming an approved supplier of Apple. When I show you the different tactics that Apple employs, you would think, wow, suppliers would never ever want to line up. But you see the Apple stores where people are lining up for Apple products. It's the same when it comes to suppliers lining up to become an approved supplier of Apple. Why is that the case? Well, I'll just give you a story of BYD. 18 years ago or more, they tried three times to become the major cell phone battery manufacturer, the approved supplier for Motorola. Motorola rejected them twice and they became the approved supplier on the third time. Why does that matter? Well, it enabled BYD to learn what it's like to supply an international brand name. Motorola taught BYD a lot of good processes and that is what is needed to become international. BYD now the largest electric vehicle manufacturer in the world. Now that is the exact large motivation that many many suppliers have to become approved supplier for Apple and other large brand names around the world. So it's not about making money by becoming the approved supplier. Be by becoming the approved supplier you actually learn and you actually can garner other customers if they know you are an approved supplier of Apple. And so there's many, many motivations for lining up to become an approved supplier, even though it directly it may be loss making, especially in the short term. OK, here we have a list of Apple suppliers and we can see this list hasn't been updated for a while and I could give you a more recent list, but I just want to show you that Corning is a major supplier of Apple, but it's not on this list because Corning has a special role. It supplies the Gorilla Glass and Corning doesn't supply directly to Foxconn. It actually supplies to Apple legally and then Apple supplies that glass to Foxconn. So Apple is kind of like the middle person between Corning and Foxconn. Why does Apple do that? These are strange ways in which Apple is managing the supply chain. So number two, you can think about not all these suppliers are the same. Not all of these suppliers have a direct relationship with Foxconn. Some of them have a direct relationship with Apple and then Apple controls the movement of the raw materials to Foxconn in that way. Okay, if we ask Apple what do they prefer when they're selecting their suppliers, I've gone to many, many semiconductor manufacturers. I've gone to many smartphone manufacturers, Motorola, HTC, and then there's other electronics manufacturers like Philips and PQI, Lucent, Shanghai, Alcatel, Bell, many, many years ago. To, and I asked them, what was the number one thing that you look for when you are selecting the suppliers? And Apple told me it was number one technology and it was quality. Of course, delivery came second and then cost came third. And I said, well, which is more important, technology or quality? The answer is both. And I never ever got that answer when I spoke to HTC or Motorola or PQI or Philips and other electronic brand names. Ah, so it's you know it's a very peculiar way of setting suppliers and we will not compromise on number one technology, the technological capability of the supplier and their capability to make a supreme quality product at all times. Ah, okay, so they are obviously focusing on technology capability but let's look at number four number four is there are hard to make samples the production process and your capability they are always perfecting the engraving so for example when suppliers 
pitch their services to Apple and say, oh, we can do the engraving. And most engraving that you get done, the etching of the engraving is like a circle into the metal or into the plastic or into the hard material. Whereas Apple said, sorry, that's not good enough. We want our engraving to actually be square. Okay, so the actual ditch of the engraving needs to be a square needs to be a flat surface, not a circular surface that is left by normal engraving tools. So they're very peculiar about exactly what the supplier has to supply. All right, obviously suppliers will come to Apple and with new technology, I'm hoping to be a proof supplier and get co-investment into that technology to develop to be mass produced. And Apple will say to that supplier, no, you go and develop it yourself, you invest yourself and then come back to us. There, Apple has the power to do that to suppliers. And when Apple visits the suppliers, it's not about, you know, it's, it's not about believing that supplier has the certificates and the capability to make what they, promising to make for Apple, Apple will actually go one step further and say, we don't care about your certificates, we care more about watching the process of you making what you promised to make for us. And so they'll send engineers to the supplier's operations to actually see the operations and to see if the supplier can actually make what they're promising to make. Now, there's a big, very, very interesting, if we go back, doesn't 15 more years, the actual touchpad on the MacBook is very, very tactile feel and one of the best feeling touchpads out of all laptops on the market. And they found, Apple found a supplier that had this very special technology and they invested millions and millions of dollars to develop that technology because they saw that technology was a key to differentiating their product family. Ah, and so at that time when they saw that supplier was making these touchscreen technology, the supplier only had a yield of about 8%. Apple invested with that supplier and brought that yield up to a manageable level so they could do mass production. Ah, so this is the thing. When Apple sees that a supplier has a technology that they can capitalize on and make their products differentiated, then Apple will invest. But for the most part, they are telling suppliers, you invest first, you prove yourself to us first before we'll make you an approved supplier. Number five, all right, so there's a few items here, but first of all, when Apple is seeking generic components, often many, many major brands, when they get generic components, every component is the same. They go to a marketplace and just buy it from a marketplace. But Apple will want to visit that supplier, certify that supplier, and actually know that the supplier is making the best generic components for what Apple sees. Because when I went and visited an inductor component manufacturer, Apple's engineers came to watch them make that process. They came to make th see that component manufacturer make that generic component right before the engineer's eyes. Okay, so it's not like Apple will treat strategic suppliers different from generic component suppliers. They treat them all the same in terms of the, at the selection stage. Every, when I asked Apple, oh, tell me about this iPhone, uh, which parts are critical, which parts are not critical. I said, what about the screen? Critical. What about the cover? Critical. What, antenna? Critical. Everything's critical. Is there anything that's not critical? And the answer was, oh yes, the packaging that the product goes in. So that's a mentality that Apple has towards their product that is actually feeding out to their supply chain and those expectations on the component suppliers. What about the color? I know of one instance where there was one supplier that had to pitch to provide a certain color to Apple and they followed exactly the engineered Pantene coding for that color. They gave the sample to Apple and Apple said, sorry, that's not the color that we want. So if the color was yellow, they gave that yellow according to the engineered specifications of that yellow. The supplier met those specifications. They provided the samples to Apple and Apple said, sorry, that's not the yellow we want. Now it was another color, but I just want to, 
hide the actual supplier in this instance by actually saying the actual color all right and I do play a game with my students say which one of these colors is black and which one is you know brownie gray and the answer is they're both the same color and it's like that but Apple will differentiate even if you follow the technological specifications to the letter they will still have a veto authority over what suppliers are proposing to supply to Apple ah negotiation with suppliers number seven of there's one thing that Apple is very, very mindful of, and that is all the different ways in which suppliers may give untruths to a major buyer, whether it's in terms of outsourcing, lower quality materials, changes made to the materials used, number of people employed, fixed investments, tooling costs, yield customers. There's all these bits, all these areas of information that suppliers can try and pull the wool over the eyes of a buyer, unsuspecting buyer. Apple is able to control a lot of these elements. And the main reason where they do control it is by controlling the second tier and third tier suppliers. So they know exactly, and they monitor the second tier and third tier suppliers and their raw material shipments to Foxcom and Pegatron and other EMS manufacturers that are in their employ. Wow. And so by actually having much more monitoring going on on the second tier, third tier suppliers, they have much more visibility of the total supply chain. And so there's this opportunity for suppliers to pull the wool over the eyes of the major buyer. Okay, so we're up to number seven. And let's just stop here and finish this part. And I'll see you soon. We'll go from eight to 14 in the next part. Thank you